Welcome to the 2024 NFL Mock Draft season. It is here, and I'm honestly late to the party. There's a ton of great mock drafts out there right now. You probably have already watched a bunch of them. But why you're here today is to get a different take on who the first round guys are right now. So this is my first mock draft of the season. I'm doing a mix of where I think these teams will go with their players and where I think I would go with these players. So it's a little bit of a mix there. I only did two trades in this one because there's no way that there's not going to be any trades, but I tried to only focus on the top quarterbacks and what teams are going to try and, and make maneuvers for those top quarterbacks. So those are in there, um, and I've already got those set up. But uh, the rest of the draft, I'm just going to go through. I already pre-selected my first round mock draft, but I'm going to go through it on PFF's webpage for you. So that way we go pick by pick. I give you a quick brief explanation of why. Honestly, there's going to be some picks that it might be a reach for me. And if you don't like it, just realize the the channel is third and wrong. We included that because we know we make mistakes. But if you'd like to talk about it, we like to talk about it. So please comment. Also like and subscribe. It helps us grow as a channel. Um, you probably know that we don't have a whole lot of subscribers or looking at the view counts, not really that high. Please help us out because I put in a lot of mental effort into putting these mock drafts out there. And I like sharing it. I like talking about it. So if you help us out, you know, we'll be able to continue to grow. So appreciate you in advance, but let's get into this real quick. All right. You may have noticed already. I have put those trades in already. Um, the first one being Washington Commanders trading up and the Bears trading down one pick. The reason why this trade is here is because I think the Commanders are eager to get their guy. And I personally, if I was the Bears, I would keep Justin Fields. I really, really like his development so far. And I think if you trade him away right now, I you can see a superstar be built somewhere else off of the off the work that you did. So um, I know that this is probably the most controversial part of the whole mock draft. That's just my my feeling of what I would do. Um Definitely put it in the comments if you disagree and why. Um, you know, I'm not above, you know, hearing out the actual fans from that team, how they would do it and stuff like that. But um, I think that the commanders want Caleb Williams more than the Bears want him. And also, it, it feels like uh, Caleb Williams doesn't want to be a Bear. So, you know, m maybe maybe things will change and we'll, we'll see how things happen. Maybe there's an actual trade that happens in the offseason. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, and if you're looking ahead, also Falcons trading up with the Chargers. Um, I would just I put this trade in advance because it's just easier to go through it then. Um, and both of these trades, I'm not worrying about the compensation right now. That's that won't be affected in the rest of the draft. So or rest of the first round mock draft. So it's it's not of a concern for me right now, but I'm going to try to give you just brief um, just what I feel about the pick as I'm going along with it um, later on in the offseason. As I know more as you know, these players reveal more about themselves with their, you know, their testing and stuff like that. Um, we'll be able to kind of lock in. OK, th this team is a better fit for this player and vice versa. So um, but like I said, Caleb Williams going first to the commanders. I, I think that's just, that's who they would be trading up for, obviously. So we'll go with that one pretty quick. Um, the thing about Caleb Williams is he just, he's, he's a, you can't compare him to any other player. Um, people compare him to Patrick Mahomes or this and that. You just can't do it. He's not a player that you can do this with because He's very polarizing, and that could be a great thing for him. It could be a terrible thing for him. We don't really know yet. And uh, Caleb Williams is just Caleb Williams. He's not, you know, Patrick Mahomes. He's not this or that. Um, he does have issues. He does have things to work through. I don't think he's this perfect prospect, but I think the commanders are willing to, at this time, to, to get up there, get their guy, and just lock it down and, you know, even bid out other teams from trying to cash in on the bears, not taking Caleb Williams. So that's why I see this move happening. Um, but again, could, could not happen. So 
Um, and then the reason why the Bears would be comfortable with trading down is they can get a an actual generational talent potential uh, wide receiver with Marvin Harrison Jr. I don't think Caleb Williams is generational, um, and, but I think Marvin Harrison Jr. has the potential to be so. So I'm going Marvin Harrison Jr. for the Bears. That way you get Justin Fields, Marvin Harrison Jr., and you get DJ Moore as well. So a good set of weapons, and you can continue to build on because you traded down, got more picks. So healthy franchise mobility right there. Uh, with the Patriots, I'm going a little bit offbeat from what I typically see or what I typically would go for with Drake May here. I think Jaden Daniels, one of the things that makes him very enticing, especially with the Patriots situation, is he has what I call survivability for the first few years, um, mainly because he does have you know mobility. He can move around. He can... He can kind of act as an extension of the run game. And right now, the Patriots need a full, like, complete rebuild on offense. And putting Drake May out there, I, I taking Drake May would not be a bad decision. I don't think it would be a wrong decision. Um, Jaden Daniels, though, can make that offense productive with less talent because he has the, you know, the 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 running style of one that can you can depend on him just running all the time. Drake May can run, but he's more of a let's create and like let's, you know, kind of um use the legs as a way to extend the passing game or, you know, to create. But with Jaden Daniels, you can do designed runs a little bit more. You can do um you more interesting things with a quarterback that you don't need like you know a great le left tackle you don't need you know these wide receivers that can catch over the middle and stuff like that where i feel like drake may would need a little bit more of a build up around him to showcase where he's just phenomenal right now so Jaden daniels i think survives more with the patriots um and then drake may i think would be a great prospect but i think he would fit better somewhere else because the Patriots' offense is just a mess right now. So you can hate on that. Totally understand. Um, but the Cardinals kind of, you know, missed out on Marvin Harrison Jr., um, where I think that's where typically a lot of Cardinals fans are expecting. I do think that they will still go with a wide receiver with really, really high upside and leaked neighbors. Uh, one, of the, one of the few wide receivers in this class that has the whole package has the production and has a huge ceiling on top of that. Um, there's just a lot to like about Malik Neighbors, and you give Kyler Murray a stellar weapon. Um, honestly, they could trade down. I, I think that's something that they might be looking for, but they're not trading for a quarterback. No one. I don't think they would trade with anyone else um, because I don't think a lot of people are going to be trying to jump that high. But you know that there's still a lot of flexibility with that position, but if they stay, Malik Neighbors is not a bad option. The Atlanta Falcons traded up. This is where Drake May goes, uh, for me at least, because he has big weapons. He's got Kyle Pitts. He's got Drake London. They can continue to add uh, more weapons. He got Bijan Robinson, so you got a running back. I think this fits Drake May really well, and you just have a big offense in size you know just a big offense and uh drake may he is compared to josh allen right now i i don't think he's exactly josh allen um i think he's going to be more contained than josh allen and that's you know that's a positive and a negative that we want one of the things that makes josh allen so great is you know he's able to hit high ceilings but, you know, the other thing is he does have a lot of turnovers because of that. So I think Drake May will be more contained, and that can be a really good thing. Um, it just limits the the ceiling that I think the May would hit compared to Allen. But, again, sky's the limit for him. I, I, who, who am I to say what his ceiling actually is? Um, with the Giants here, I really thought about quarterback. It's just hard with Daniel Jones' contract. Um, you're paying them $40 million. And I don't know if they're going to get 
you know, I don't think they're going to get rid of that contract. It's hard to have that, you know, money sitting on the bench. And he's had some good years in the past. So, you know, for me right now, the, the way I just felt was let's just get an offensive line settled. Then we can worry about some weapons down the road. And, you know, let's start to, you know, get this offense back on the role that it was before. Uh, so I would go Joe Alt here. The Titans are also another team that can go a lot of different ways. All, all these teams can go a lot of different ways. I feel like they need a lot of help on offensive line now because they've just kind of aged out a lot of their great offensive linemen. And that's where I go with Fashanu. I think he has the potential to be the first offensive tackle off the board. Um, he has a potential to play a number of different spots on the offensive line, but you know that he's extremely solid. Very good dude, smart dude. So I think that's a great piece for them to work with there in Tennessee. Get Will Levis more time and get him, you know, uh, get, get him developing more around a good offensive line. Uh, Chargers, I think they feel like they can trade down because there's a lot of good options for them. Um, new head coach, uh, you know, you, you got uh, Justin Herbert to feed. So that's where I went with Rome Odunze. I really like his size, his catch radius, his everything about him. Um, he He's just a phenomenal player. I think he would match really well with Herbert. And you have Keenan Allen there. Uh, you got potentially Mike Williams staying. We'll, we'll see there. But um, they obviously need talent. So Roma Dunze definitely fits the bill there with a trade down to eight. I think that's a win for the Chargers. Um, with the Chicago Bears... Uh, there, there's a few things that they can do. I think they're, they could go left tackle here if there's a guy that they really like. Like J.C. Latham is a potential there. Um, or, you know, some of these other guys. But, you know, I think with where they're at, they could go with a, a very solid edge in Dallas Turner and pair him across the line with Montez Sweat and, you know, kind of get after the you know the nfc north teams that are just crazy with their offense you got packers lions and vikings all with crazy offense offense already so getting two powerful edges coming off the line i think would really help them from getting after the quarterbacks in their division and um, with the jets again this is another offensive line where it's like they do need help and that's what i'm going for I think Fuaga really can help shore up either a tackle or guard position for them. And they have a lot of solid pieces. They just have not been able to figure out where those pieces go yet. So I'm going Fuaga here. With the Vikings, um, kind of kind of the same thing with the with the Bears. It's you, you have a lot of um a lot of competition in your division already. They could go quarterback here. I think they stick with Kirk Cousins and they're in for it because they've had some very, you know, very good offensive seasons this year. And if we can get their defense to just get home more and more often, I think that would be a huge win for them. I think Jared Verse, you know, is kind of another arsenal, a weapon in the arsenal for their defense, get after the quarterbacks, same kind of deal there. This one I think is interesting. Again, this is another team that can go quarterback. Uh, you know, that depends if they fall in love with a JJ McCarthy or a Bone Hicks or um Michael Penix Jr. Everyone has some, you know, some questions or things that's like meh. And right now, Russell Wilson hasn't moved on yet. He hasn't restructured restructured a contract, he hasn't been let go. I'm going to just assume that somehow things get greased over and Russell Wilson is their quarterback or they find another option here. So I'm not going quarterback right now. And the, I think the exciting thing here is they have great wide receivers. They've got good running backs. They've got a good offensive line. they got a good defense. Why not just take someone that if you strike out on your quarterback this year, you're gonna have a great court or a great tight end down the road, and it's gonna make it easier for you know if you have a young quarterback or if you have 
you know, Russell Wilson out there, he can still get the ball to Brock Bowers because he he's not just an inline tight end. He doesn't love throwing to tight ends, but he would be out in the slot, big slot. You can even put him out as a wide receiver if he really wanted to. So I think Brock Bowers would be an awesome pick for the Broncos. Again, that's that's more out of the the typical. I feel like I see, but I don't think it. I don't think it's bad. So I'm gonna go Brock Bowers here. Not a need pick, but can really help out their future. Brock Bowers. Okay, Las Vegas Raiders. This is another one where it's let's get them. The best option right now is offensive line. Let's support Aiden O'Connell. He's gunslinger. I love him. You got good. Weapons all over the board. Defense can still kind of get their game up, but that's going to be the rest of the draft for the Raiders, I feel like. So I went with J.C. Latham. Big dude. I think he can lock down whatever position, maybe right tackle, with the Luminor potentially leaving. With the Saints here, I see them going defensive line. I, I just feel that. I really like Jertron Newton. I think he would fit somewhere on that offensive line you get younger there and it's been a strength for them let's keep adding into their defensive line okay i'm a colts fan um if you didn't notice on my previous screen i have the colts colors the colts logo that's because i'm the resident colts expert um and there's a lot of cornerbacks on the board and everything i see a lot of people go cornerback or brock bowers i don't think that Chris Ballard is going to do either of those. Um, well, you know, it, it could happen, but I think if he had the chance to take Lee off to lot two, he's going for it a hundred percent. Um, just one of those bendy, explosive edge, long arms, just everything that you want in an edge, highly productive. He hasn't been able to draft that ever. And now he has a chance to do it. I think he's going to lock it in. So play Yatu Latu, you know, give Quiddy Pay, you know, someone to take the pressure off of him on the other side and just get out there the quarterback. And with um, Gus Bradley, it gives him another back master to get, get out there the quarterback. This one, though, for the Seattle Seahawks is really tough because I feel like they're stacked on corners right now. Um, and. They're stacked on wide receivers. You know, they they might add someone to kind of fill in the um, Tyler Lockett role. They could. Um, they could also do that later on in the draft. Um, and how is it seeing Edge? Who Who's a Seattle Seahawks Edge? And I scrolled down, and this guy is rising right now. So, you know, he's going to get drafted higher than this. But Darius Robinson's big dude. But he can fill a lot of positions on that Seattle Seahawks line. And I feel like this actually fits for them surprisingly well. So definitely, you can hate on me. Uh, I just feel like that fits the Seattle Seahawks motive. I think he's a riser. I think it feels like a reach now. But I feel like later on in the draft season, this isn't going to feel as much of a reach as it feels right now. Uh, though the... Jacksonville Jaguars on the board. Love to get them another weapon for Trevor Lawrence. But right now, let's take care of Quinion Mitchell. I think this would be a really good spot for him. The Jaguars have kind of needed this, this you know, more consistent play at cornerback. I think this really helps them out. And it allows them to kind of get cheaper at the position, get younger, and build up for Trevor Lawrence's contract. So the Cincinnati Bengals here. Um, again, a, a team that can go a lot of different ways. Tackle's always one of those needs that it feels like they have. Um, however, I went with, I got to check my board here. Sorry, I scroll, I scroll up more. With Byron Murphy, um, get younger, get um, cheaper at the position in uh, the defensive interior. I think Byron Murphy is really explosive. I think he can make an impact on that defense. And that's a great defense too. So, um, I, I think this would be a good pick there. The Los Angeles Rams um, get, you know, Cooper Cup's defensive equal with Cooper DeGene. I love it. Um, I, but I do I do feel like it fits. I, I feel like it's a need. And I think it's great value. Um, 
the Steelers, I could see them go in Jackson Powers Johnson. That's more of what I see them doing rather than what I would do. But I don't feel like it. It's a uh, it's a reach. I think it's something that can really help them out. Um, and I think Jackson Power Johnson deserves to be up here. The Miami Dolphins. I think this is a offensive line pick, and I went with Amarius Mims. And then the Eagles. I see Terry on Arnold fitting with them more than Nate Wiggins. I really like him with a cornerback one mentality but being an opposite of Darius Slay. And if, you know, Slay can kind of get back to where he was a year or two ago, that would be awesome too. Uh, CJ Stroud needs some weapons. Uh, Troy Franklin, to me, big, tall, fast guy. We saw what uh, CJ Stroud can do with a, you know, tall, fast guy with Nico Collins, but this is just taller and faster. Maybe, maybe not taller, but definitely faster. I think this is scary to me as a Colts fan. This is probably like the least favorite option right now. So I'm going with Troy Franklin there just to give them that extra speed boost. Uh, the Cowboys here, I went with Nate Wiggins. They do have good corners, but why not like get them a, a solid young guy that can take care of the slot. He can play in a lot of different positions right now. So I'm going corner here. With the Packers, I believe, let me just check my stuff. Yeah, Troy Fautanu, Fautanu, maybe? I, I suck at pronunciation sometimes, but I'm going to go with Fautanu. Um, tackle out of Washington. I think this is just kind of fits their MO right now. There's there's not really another player that can really, like, that's really popping out to me that they need. So I'm going with a really, really solid offensive tackle for the Packers. Um, here we uh, we claim Kool Aid McKinstry for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Get a solid cornerback for them. Uh, the Cardinals, I see them kind of reaching for a TJ Tampa. This is another player that feels like a reach now that I think later on in the draft season is going to feel less like a reach. Uh, the Buffalo Bills, I decided to go with something that I, f I feel like fits what they need. A lot of people are itching to give them Brian Thomas Jr. right now. Um, however, I just don't feel like he would fit in that offense as well as this other guy. Um, and this is just more like, uh, how scary would this guy be with Josh Allen? And to me, that's Xavier worthy. He's worthy of the first round. He's probably the fastest dude in the draft. Um, he's got great hands. He's been productive as a freshman, sophomore and junior now, and I think you have that speed with Josh Allen's arm and it's. Dude, <laughs> oh man, it, it would open up so much for their offense just on speed alone. And if they can connect on those deep ball passes, like, oh my hell. Uh, the Detroit Lions, it's hard to pick for them exactly where they should go with everything being said. I, I went more with a guard tackle combo in Graham Barton. He can play kind of either or, but he would definitely be solid on that offensive line. Um, definitely improved their run game too. Here, the Baltimore Moore Ravens. This is another one where wide receiver is something that they could capitalize on in the first round for their value. Um, Brian Thomas Jr. Again, big body. He's fast. He can stack corners. He can get down the field. Um, however, I feel like what's missing more in the Ravens weapons is someone that could be a just a, a mismatch piece opposite of Zay Flowers. And I feel like that would fit Adonai Mitchell more, A.D. Mitchell more. And I just really like his tape and his production. So, again, hate on me if you want. I just, I really like these Texas wide receivers, I guess. Uh, with the Niners, I went with someone that I feel like is... It was a higher recruit coming, you know, out of high school and in the transfer portal and stuff like that when he was in those situations. He hasn't put everything all together. I think the Niners can get everything out of this dude. And that is a former lock for the first round. He's slipped out of there. But uh, Kingsley Suamataya, I do, again, I suck at pronunciations, but tackle out of BYU. Um, he had a down year. Uh, he did not meet 
expectations. But again, it's it's a it's a thing that I think the Niners can overcome, and they would get great value out of this dude if he's not a tackle right away. Make him guard. I think you can grow him into being a franchise tackle on either side, depending on what you need. And then the last pick of the first round, the reigning back-to-back champs, the Kansas City Chiefs. I went with someone that I feel like they would go for, um, more so than what I would go for in this situation. Um, And that is a rising prospect as well with Jonah Ellis and Edge out of Utah. That completes our first round uh, draft, but um, Jonah Ellis there, he's definitely rising. He he has less production, but I feel like the Kansas City Chiefs can lean on the upside there and not need like day one production, but I, I think they'll get day one production. I just think Jonah Ellis is someone that is going to prove two to three years down the road as being one of the better edges in this class because he's so put together right now. I think it's just that production, that experience just needs to come together. So um, that's my first round mock draft. Again, I hope this doesn't feel like I'm just throwing out these hot takes to throw them out there. Um, These are players that I feel like I would like in on these teams um, or their position when it comes to offensive line. Um, But If you have any strong opinions against what I'm saying, or you're like, man, dude, killer first round mock draft, dude, like, hell yeah. Like, obviously, you're probably not saying that, but put it in the comments. It helps us out. Um, Also, if you haven't already, again, like and comment helps us out. We're a small YouTube channel. We would really like to grow this channel, reach out further. And, you know, we like to, to comment, too. So if you say something, we're probably firing something right back to you. But if you like this, again, show us some support. But other than that, welcome to the off season. Welcome to mock draft season. And stick with us. We'll put more videos out there for you. And we'll see you then.